I do believe that it is always a great day when we're talking about the bishop's opening. If you've been following me for a while, you know that it's one of my favorite ways to counter uh, first black's move pawn to e5. In fact, my video about the bishop's opening is one of the most viewed videos on this channel, which means that you guys are enjoying it just as well. And so I've decided to record a follow-up video and to show you some more ideas, because really there are so many cool ideas and traps all along the way here. And if black just plays natural, you know, standard moves, very often they go down so badly. And that's what I love about this opening. So let's take a look. The most common move for black here is the standard move knight to f6, attacking this pawn. And although there are different things that you can do here, uh, today we're going to look at the move knight to f3, which kind of counterattacks black's pawn here on e5. Again, there are a few options that black can choose to play here, but let's first take a look at one of the funniest one, and that is the move bishop c5, which is actually one of the most played moves in this position. And funnily enough, the standard move is losing so badly for black that black can't even imagine how bad they're going to suffer over the course of the next few moves. And again, this looks just like such a standard move, it's kind of like the Italian game, you know, black is mimicking your moves, but that's not really the case. So first of all, you're grabbing this pawn happily and saying thanks to your opponent, because now black will realize that they can't mimic your moves anymore. Knight takes e4 would lose, because knight e5 also hits this pawn on f7, right? So black has to guard it, or otherwise you're going to capture it with a bishop or with a knight, and in both cases that is deadly. Um, therefore, black will probably castle in order to keep their pawn. But that's not the end of black suffering, because after d4, after attacking the bishops, going back, and now you have another nice little combo, which black did not expect. Not only you want a pawn, but now you keep attacking with the move knight takes f7, something black black totally you know, does, does not expect. And now you're calling the king out, and after pawn e5, strangely enough, black is defenseless. Although, it looks like there is nothing too bad happens with, with this king so far, but it is exposed. And on the next move, you plan to keep attacking it with something like queen f3 or h5, and, you know, you just wait here. For example, one line, which is funny, and it's also, I believe, the most played line, knight to d5. You, you follow up with queen to f3 with a double attack to the king and the knight, kind of like in the fried liver attack. And, uh, you know, all the attack and pattern is the same. If black wants to keep their knight, they have to keep moving forward, keep developing their king instead of developing, you know, the rest of their army. And now after that, you play c4, you keep attacking. Now this knight is attacked once again. Black usually moves it over here, but now pawn d5 and the king is actually nearly checkmated. For example, if king takes e5, then queen f4 is just a very nice little checkmate, which occurred after black played all the natural standard moves in the opening, hoping that they're just doing the right thing. Uh, by the way, there is also a funny subversion here in this attack. After you just played pawn e5, attacking this knight, we already know that knight d5 is not an option because of queen f3, with a massive attack over here and over here. So knight d5 is not an option. What else can black play? This diagonal is controlled by the queen, therefore then I can't go there. It's going to be captured by white's queen. And black may decide, okay, let me play safe. Let me just go back so that nothing can capture this knight anymore. You say, okay, and you play queen h5. This time you check the king, you also attack this pawn. And after king goes back, there is a funny move bishop g5. Black hided their king successfully, but now their queen is nearly trapped. And for significant material deficit, it's basically time for black to resign. Alrighty, let's move on. We already know that a natural looking bishop c5, in fact, is a fatal mistake. And after that, you grab this pawn, you attack over here, and you win. What else can black do? Well, of course, there are different variations. I can't show them all within one video. But in fact, I've already recorded a few videos about the bishop's opening. I'll link them down in the description below the video. And if you check just a few of them, I guarantee you'll be ahead of 99% of your opponents. For now, let's take a look at another common move, which is knight takes e4. Black played a move knight of 6, attacking this pawn, you did not defend it, and therefore it makes sense for black to, to grab it, right? And here, what I suggest you to do is to play the move knight to, to c3, which transposes the game into kind of like the Stafford Gambit, but you're playing it as white, and therefore you have an extra tempo after knight takes c3, pawn takes. You're having a classical Gambit, where yes, you sacrifice the pawn, but you're way ahead in development, black is still completely underdeveloped, and your army is already extremely active. Your one bishop is active, the other one is ready to join the party. The knight from here is ready to take this pawn or do something else. The queen is active, can jump over there somehow. So you see that your army is already way ahead in development, and therefore you are ready to start attacking black. Also, there are so many traps here just once again. The first thing that your pawn will notice is that you attack this pawn. 
And if black tries defending it somehow, let's say with the move knight to c6 or something else, then it's a little mistake because they overlook your second, which is a hidden uh, threat of knight to g5. From here, we attack this pawn and there is simply no sufficient defense and basically you win. As simple as that. All right, let's take uh, t take one move back. Uh, what if black defends this pawn with a move pawn d6? And first of all, you can't play out the same threat. Knight g5 wins just as well. Still, there is no sufficient defense and you win. Besides that, there is another line, which is maybe not a stronger option, but a funnier option, you know, more entertaining option, which is knight takes e5. You sacrifice a knight in the style of old masters. You still hit the pawn, by the way, with your knight and bishop. And if black captures it, there is bishop takes f7 explosion deflecting black's king from the defense of the queen and therefore you win if the queen moves the king moves away you pick up the queen if the king tries to maintain uh, the defense then there is bishop g5 you just bring up one more attacker and you grab the uh, you know the queen anyway with your bishop or queen doesn't matter and you win the game the most stubborn defense for black in this position is a weird move pawn to f6 it does not look nice because it weakens this diagonal therefore black can't castle anymore that easily uh, but the good thing about this move pawn of six is that it does prevent both of white's threats. So your white knight can jump over here, can jump over here, and at least for now, temporarily, black is safe. But of course, you're gonna keep attacking. Anyway, black is underdeveloped. Anyway, their king is weak and exposed, and therefore, we're gonna take advantage of that. We just change the root of the knight, and he jumps to h4, opening up for the queen to go for queen h5 check and deliver, you know, something like scholar's checkmate. It's a major threat for black. They have to parry it. So... They're going to play another pawn move, pawn g6. So far, black plays checkers, which is nice. They don't develop. And since you are way ahead in development, basically, you'd love to open up the position so that your pieces can start the direct attack of the opponent's king. And so you play the move, pawn f4. If your pawn will take this pawn, basically, you're happy because you achieved your goal. And uh, once again, what I love about this is that black can easily go wrong at every step of the way. There are many natural looking moves which are in fact big mistakes. For example, over here, pawn takes a four is very risky for black because you don't even need to take it back right now. You can just castle and you see that, you know, you're ready to attack along the e-file. Black's king is kind of trapped there, can't castle in anymore. And I believe that in a real practical game, black will probably be defenseless. All right, let's take it back. If black does not want to take this pawn, besides taking over here, you've got another threat of pawn f5, also very annoying for black. Uh, so the way for them to play is the move queen to e7. They're unlikely to find this move unless they are prepared, but even if they are prepared, we're gonna keep attacking them. Pawn f5. Our goal here is to get rid of this pawn so that our queen can still jump over, over there and attack the king. For example, if black tries to keep it safe and play g5, say, okay, Let's push this knight away. Instead of moving the knight away, you just play queen to h5, not king to h5, queen to h5. Check to the king. The king has to go, which is already nice. And now there is another typical combo, knight to g6. We're taking advantage of this pin, and the knight is also forking the queen and rook. So definitely we are going to win something. For example, the rook. If they take over here, we're going to win the rook and keep attacking. Therefore, in this position, the correct move for black instead of the move pawn g5 is another strange move, queen to g7. Of course, if your opponent plays all these moves, it means that either he's well prepared or he's a cheater. Anyway, we keep attacking, we trade over here, we play queen g4, renewing the threat to this pawn. And, you know, probably your pawn is gonna play right, like this, pawn g5. Now you go knight f5, that's nice. Your knight got back into the game with, uh, you know, threat to the queen. And after the queen goes, let's say over here, you can keep attacking. Bishop d3 sets it up for a discover check on the next move with something like knight to d6, you know, and then win the queen. If queen goes away, you can attack with the move pawn h4, challenging this pawn over here. And if the pawn takes here, there is also a nice little combo that I would love to ask you to find and to write it down in the comments below if you can. So if you can, write it down in the comments below. If you can't, go for the comments. I do believe that somebody will find it. Also, since it is a Black Friday today, I'm forced to offer huge discounts. So you are welcome to click the link below the video, get to my website and pick any course about any subject that you wish to improve at and get it at a massive 60% discount, which is good only for a few days. With hundreds of students that I've taught personally over the years and many thousands of students that I've taught over the internet with the courses, I would be an idiot not to notice the patterns, what works and what doesn't. And so right now I'm capable of providing 
providing you the proven roadmap where you can just take a particular course, learn it and improve in no time following the footsteps of many other students who did just that and improved their game, got to 2000 rating, became title players and whatnot. So again, just for a few days, you may click the link and get it at a massive discount. I hope that you enjoyed this video about the Bishop's opening. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you soon. Have a great rest of the day.